Welcome to another video. This is called a septic equation because it's a seventh degree polynomial on either side. So, one question I was thinking about before is how many solutions am I supposed to get? Am I supposed to get seven solutions or six solutions? Yeah, we're going to get to that part later. But there's something I would like you to observe in that the highest degree of x on the left-hand side is also present on the right-hand side. That means they will cancel out by the time you expand this. So you're not going to get seven solutions, you're going to get six because of the way this is set up. And are we going to expand this all the way? Well, let's get into the video. In order to solve a problem like this, especially when the degree of the polynomial is higher than 3 because we know how to deal with the sum of 2 cubes or the difference of 2 cubes, but when you start getting into the 5th power, the 7th power, the ninth power, you might start thinking there has to be a way out or something that I need to memorize. This is one of them. Now, looking at what we have we might write, pull everything to, the, uh, to one side and have an equation. So we might say that x plus 7 to the 7th minus x to the 7th minus 7 to the 7th will be equal to 0. Well, this is an incredibly big number, so I don't think I want to deal with that. But this is something I want us to look at. Let's start from a smaller number because we have to find a way we can't deal with these big numbers because 7 times 7 is already 49. So by the time you do your binomial expansion, by the time you get to 7 times 7 times 7, the numbers are beginning to go crazy, right? Okay, uh-huh. So you're not going to do 7 times 7 is 49. The next one is going to be, I think, 343. Am I right? 49 times 7. Yeah, you're going to be getting 343 and you multiply by 7 again, it's going to be an insanely big number. So I don't think that's what we want to be looking for here. So let's look at some patterns that happen when you expand things like this. Look, x plus y, let's cube it. We want to see how this differs from x cubed plus y cubed. You notice that when you expand this, you'll say, oh, this is equal to whatever you get. Let, let's, let's put it that way. Okay, let's write that out. So that's going to be x cubed plus x squared y plus um, x y squared with 3 and 3 and we say plus y cubed. We want to compare it to x cubed plus y cubed you notice that the difference between this and this is just what is in the middle. And what is in the middle can be written in a super nice way. Watch what happens. You see, you can see this is here and this is here. So the only thing that makes these two different is what's in the middle here. And this middle part can be written as what's common to this and this. I think 3xy. Yes, so here we're going to have x, here we have y, x plus y. Do you see the difference? So that means if you subtract this from this, this is what's going to come out, which is similar to what we just did. We just subtracted this from this, and we want to see what comes out. What comes out of it is what we're going to be solving for. So when the power is 3, this is what you get, 3xy, x plus y. Okay, now this one, because I don't want this video to be too long, I want you to practice it and figure out what comes out. Now, if you're dealing with x plus y to the fifth, and you're subtracting x to the fifth and y to the fifth, what's going to come out of this is going to be very similar to this. You're just going to have an addition. And what you're going to have will be 3xy, sorry, not 3 the power is 5, so it's going to be 5xy. You're going to have x plus y. 
and you're going to have one additional is going to be x squared plus xy plus y squared. Once the power goes to 5, it becomes like this. So, I'm going to tell you what happens. Now you have to do the work yourself, but it's the same process I did here. That's how you're going to get this. Just keep factoring and factoring smartly. You're going to come back to this one. Now, what if we do x plus y to the seventh minus x to the seventh minus y to the seventh? What are you going to get? You're going to get something similar. You can always predict it. It's going to be 7xy, sorry, 7xy times x plus y times, this is going to be there, you see, we're just upgrading, okay? It's going to be x squared plus xy plus y squared, but you're going to have this one squared. This is what we need. So this is what comes out of this difference. So I'm going to go here. Now, you can manually do this by yourself. You're going to find out that you're going to get this. So I'm going to go here and say that my answer is 7xy x plus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared squared is equal to 0. Now I know this is equal to zero, or this is equal to zero, or this is equal to zero. And I know what my x is, I don't know, but I know what y is, y is seven. So I just need to solve each of them. But I know that my y is actually seven. So I will have to replace everything that looks like y as seven. Seven xy is gonna be seven times x times seven, which is 49x. So I have to change this to 49x. I'm going to erase it, but I just want you to see it. This is 49x times. This is going to be x plus 7. And this is going to be x squared plus, what would this be? 7x. This is going to be 49. Everything squared is equal to 0. So we have... This equals zero, so we have 49x equals zero. We have x plus seven equals zero. And we have x squared plus seven x plus 49 is equal to zero. This is squared, okay. So whatever answer we get here, we'll have a multiplicity of two because this happens twice. So here we go. From here, this means if you divide both sides by 49, you get x equals 0. x is equal to 0. This one is our first answer. So we go to the second one. x plus 7 equals 0 means that x is equal to negative 7. That's our second answer. Okay, let's put this in an oval shape. So those are our answers. And the third one is the one that requires some work. Let's see how that works. Okay, I need to, because this cannot be factored. Yes, yeah, so I have to use the quadratic formula. It's gonna be crazy, okay, but we'll try. So we have x equals minus b minus seven plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 4 times 49, okay, 4 times 49, all over 2, okay, this is going to be negative 7 plus or minus, there's 49 here, there's 49 here, I can factor it out and take the square root of it, it's going to be 7, so I got 7 times the square root of 1, there's be 1 left here, minus 4, nice, over 2. So this gives me, um, let's write it here. This is negative 7 plus or minus 7 times. So here I'm going to have negative 3 and the square root of negative 3 is the square root of 3 imaginary. Okay, so it's going to be times imaginary square root of 3. Okay, divided by 2. And I think that's it.
So we have all our six answers. Because I got two here. I got one here, I got one here, but each of the two here has a multiplicity of two. So let's list out all the solutions. So we have, and that is it. The most important part of it is you being able to get this out of it and using it. Oh, I said I was gonna strike this out. Okay, let's put this in a box. That was the key to answering this. Try and develop yours. Just do the algebra, take the time. And never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.